Hello everyone, this is the video I promised you about the nervous system. Uh, as you can see, I'm filming it in class uh, because I don't have time and uh, uh, at home. Uh, you can hear some of the students shouting. Uh, don't mind them. Uh, okay, so as I said, this is about the nervous system. What you need to know about the nervous system, first, there are two parts of the nervous system. Either the CNS, which is the central nervous system consist consisting of the brain and the spinal cord. The spinal cord is inside, the, the brain is inside the skull, of course. The spinal cord is inside the vertebral column, which is our spine, uh, the bone and the back, or the backbone. The second part is the PNS, or the peripheral nervous system, where uh, they are all the nerves, all the neurons, outside of the CNS. They are the ones that send signals out of the CNS or back to the CNS and connect all the different parts of our body to our brain and spinal cord. This is a typical nerve cell called a neuron where you have the cell body, the nucleus in the cell body, and you have the prolongation of the cell, which is the axon, and the end of the axon. Usually, the cell body is either in the CNS or next to the CNS, and the axon goes out to the, toward the areas of the PNS until it reaches a receptor or an effector. So this might be in our spinal cord, and this might be as long as to reach a muscle in our hand or foot or toe, etc. There are three types of neurons. They are either motor, sensory, or interneuron. Motor are called efferent because they send the signals out of the spinal cord. So E, remember E for exit. So motor is efferent. Sensory is the opposite. It's afferent, so it sends signals back to the CNS. What do I mean by signals? Um, okay, so it's either, uh, so the motor, from its name, motor comes for movement. So it's the movement of our body. If you want to move our body, we are sending the signals toward our muscles. So it goes from the CNS toward muscles. Okay? So it goes, ex it exits the CNS, so it's efferent. It's, this is the motor neurons. These are the motor, the motor neurons are the ones that carry these messages. Sensory neurons are the ones that carry from receptors back to the CNS. The receptors might be touch receptors that make us, make us feel whatever we touch, heat receptors that make us distinguish between cold and warm, photoreceptors like in the eye to let us see the light, chemical receptors like in tongue, nose, etc., etc. These all capture messages or like signals from the outside and send them back to the CNS. The third type of neuron is the, oops, is the interneuron. The interneuron is inside the CNS because, of course, our uh, nervous system is a complex relation of billions of neurons. It's not just receptor coming in, uh, effector coming out, uh, or uh, sensory and motor. We need to decide stuff. We need to integrate. We need to decide to do this, to do not, not to do this to save memories, etc., etc. All of these require all the interneurons in the CNS. So we have interneurons in our brain, brain, billions of interneurons in our brain. We have interneurons in our spinal cord. We reach to the point where, uh, okay, so this is a typical motor neuron, cell body to muscles, and this is a typical sensory neuron from receptors toward the CNS. Okay, and this is a typical signal from receptors towards spinal cord. We have an interneuron that transmits the message to an efferent or motor neuron back to muscles which will contract. Okay, now for uh, concerning how do the how do the signal how are the signals uh, transmitted? First, there's something special about the neurons, all the neurons of our body, is that they have something called resting potential. Okay. Resting potential or RP. The resting potential is a potential, so let's say this is um, part of the neuron, which is the axon. Okay, so we'll have here 
if we continue it will have a cell body and hip and right but let's take only this part which is the axle if we use an uh, a device to record the potential of the membrane we will notice that inside it's negative and to the outside of the membrane it's positive of course this is uh, uh, this is uh, so here is the inside because it's think of it as a tube and here's the outside what causes this resting potential why does it keep changing like this just a moment yeah now what causes this uh, is what we will explain here okay what causes this is two ions that you need to know they are either K plus or Na plus of course ions are atoms that have lost or gained electrons these of course have lost since they are positive okay the distribution or the unequal distribution of these ions between the outside and the inside <coughs> causes this resting potential this resting potential is called resting because it's when there is no message so when the neuron is just living without any message coming back or forth we have this potential which is around 70 millivolt the 70 millivolt means the difference between outside and inside is 70 millivolt now what keeps this resting potential this membrane the membrane of the neuron is uh, it's not doesn't let the ions pass in the same way it lets the k plus pass faster than the Na plus so the K plus goes out you will see now why it goes out and not in okay and then a oops okay and the Na plus goes in the wait yeah. so the K plus <coughs> goes out the Na plus goes in as we you can notice the K plus goes in a faster way than the Na plus is going in they diffuse based on the concentration gradient which is diffusion and they create this difference because like let's say 3 K plus go out 1 Na plus goes in then 3 go out 1 goes in where will we have more positive ions it's on the outside that's we have that's why we have more positive on the outside it doesn't mean that we have negative on the inside but we have less positive on the inside that's what why we say it's positive negative and that's why we say it's polarized so it has poles we say the membrane just a moment the membrane is polarized so we have poles I don't know why the pen is doing like this. Anyway, uh, okay. So we have poles, but if we leave it like this, all the K plus or the K plus will reach a point where we have the same K plus outside, the same K plus inside. Even the Na plus will have the same uh, outside, the same inside, because that's the law of diffusion where they will reach equilibrium. What stops this from happening is the pump that will get the K plus back inside and then a plus back outside to keep this cycle going on, going on so if we bring the k plus back inside they will keep going out and if we bring the na plus back outside they will keep going in but they do not go out and in in the same way the k plus will go faster the na plus will go slower but they keep going on and this faster slower causes potential which is 70 millivolt so if we see here you can see that the arrow for K plus is larger, so the K plus diffuses faster than NA plus, and then the NA plus is taken outside, the K plus taken inside. We have a cycle for these, we have a cycle for those. It's go, it goes on all the time without any stop. That's the resting potential. Now, when we have a signal, so let's go back here. Okay, so I have this axon and I touched it with a needle or whatever it is 
and I gave a signal. So this now this axon will give a signal which will move this way. Let's say it's a motor, it's a sensory, and it will take it to the sensor to the CNS. When I touch it here, I create something called action potential. The action potential, opposite to the resting potential, is where the action is happening. It's not minus 70 and stable. Something happens. At the moment that this touches here, and if it's strong enough, we say it reached the threshold. If it reached the threshold, then it gives an action potential. It might be very weak, very, very, very weak. So like a slight touch on the neuron, and the neuron won't send any message because the stimulus, which is the touching in the needle uh, is very weak so it doesn't give it doesn't reach the threshold we say if it reached the threshold the following will happen first k plus will uh, sorry the na plus will rush inside because the na plus channel will all open when they all open na plus will rush inside now you should know if na plus rushed inside what will happen to the What will happen to the uh, po to the potential? If we have a graph recording the potential, that's what we will see. So it was the resting potential was here, which is minus 70. Na plus goes in, so it goes up. Why? Because now we have more positive inside. It flipped. The polarity flipped. Since Na plus rushed inside, so of course, we'll have a lot of positive inside. Now it's positive inside, negative outside. We can stay like this. It, sh it, sh it should go back. It will go back to normal, to the resting potential. This going back is because of the rush. The, the K plus will rush outside because the K plus channels have opened. So K plus will rush outside. The, I don't know this pen. Why does it do like this? The K plus will rush outside which will bring back the potential back to normal and you might have a slight uh, change like less than minus 70 but it then goes back to minus 70 which is the resting potential we call this depolarization because it's opposite to what it was it was we said the neuron was polarized this is depolarization it's because it's acting the opposite way this is this is Repolarization because it's going back to the polarization. We might have here uh, something called hyperpolarization, which is more and more polarization, but it doesn't affect that much, and it, it's quickly restored back to minus 70 millivolt by the pump acting and the whole thing, the whole resting potential thing. This is Na plus rushing in. This is K plus rushing out. Depolarization Na plus rushing in K plus. Uh, repolarization K plus rushing out and then back to normal. Now the touching here have created an action potential let's say in, in, oops, 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 in this area so there's an action potential here that doesn't help a lot if it doesn't move if, if the action potential doesn't move along the axon. The change of the, the flipping of the uh, potential in this region in this region of the axon affects the next region and then we will have here the same thing happening again Na plus rushing inside then K plus rushing outside so another action potential starting here so the flipping of potential here it's like a stimulus given to the other side then we have an action potential in this region this one will affect this region and this region will affect the other etc etc then we have action potential moving along the neuron until it reaches its destination it might be a muscle if it's if this is a motor neuron <clears throat> it might be the cns if this is a sensory neuron and if there is myelin sheath then it jumps between the myelin sheath and that's how it's done this is the limit of uh, the video which is 15 minutes i will see if I'll, I'll post another video about the synapses and the second part of the nervous system this is what you need to know for now action potential resting potential types of neurons cns pns uh, i hope this was helpful and i'll see you in the next video uh, it's not pressing